In this video, I'll tell you about how to develop an Android application which can utilize I2C bus for communication. For this demonstration, I'll be using ADXL345 3-axis accelerometer. So you can see that uh, I'll use uh, this kind of setup for this demonstration. So my this sensor that is ADXL345 sensor, I have attached it with I2C2 bus which is present at 19th and 20th pin of beagle bone black so if you see that uh, so uh, there are two i2c buses available on beagle bone black that is i2c1 and i2c2 this i2c2 bus is by default enabled for capturing the capes attached on the beagle bone black so we will be using this bus for our sensor so let me show you so so I, I have <coughs> attached sensor with beagle bone black like this so you can see that so I have attached it with 19th and 20th pin of beagle bone black okay so so there is uh, a tool that is called i2c tools that we will be using uh, for some demonstration so in this tool we have i2c detect i2c dump i2c get and i2c set uh, these tools are already uh, pre-installed in the image uh, uh, of bbb android so you can uh, if you see Yes, I2C. So there are two buses for I2C. That is I2C zero and I2C one. Our I2C two bus is available at this file. So we will use it. So let's see I2C detect. So here you can see the output. This d uh, dashes so that uh, n no device is attached at this address of I2C bus and uh, this UU shows that uh, these are reserved places so we cannot at attach any uh, sensor or device at this address our sensor is attached with uh, 53 address so we can access our sensor using this address so let's do that so we will use i2c dump so these are the registers available on our sensor this particular register shows the chip id of our sensor actually we can also see a particular register using i2c get tool so uh, i one second i2c get then was then address of the device then register that you want to access so you can see that it is 0xe5 that is the uh, chip id okay so for uh, using this sensor we have to actually uh, uh, initialize two registers so first of all we have to initialize power control register and data format register there is a good website that demonstrates how, how to develop the code for accessing ADXL345 sensor uh, this link will be available on the description of this video you can access this website using that link so here you can see that it is written that to start the measurement we just need to set bit 3 in power control register so uh, you can actually see the power control register here and you can find the address of it that is 0x2d so we have to set that address with 0x08 so we can actually do that using i2c set so let's do that you can also see if value is already set so i2c get
so you can see that value is 0x08 still we won't be able to measure the uh, x y z values so next we have to do is we have to set the data format register so you can find the address of data format register that is 0x31 we have to set that with 0x 0b you can actually read this uh, this is a pretty good website you, you will be able to know why uh, we are setting these values c set 0x53 0x31 0x zero B okay so you can see that value is set to zero X zero B now we will be able to read the XYZ value uh, raw values actually we can also set the offset uh, for good readings uh, you can see you can read it through and you will find how to set that thing I'm uh, just demonstra uh, demonstrating you how to access the device so I'm not doing that thing so here you can see that this is same as uh, previous now I'll rotate a little bit so you will actually find that this value is changed that is from three, uh, uh, 0x32 so here uh, you can find that this was a different value again I am rotating it further so it will again change so this is again changed if you see the data sheet then you will notice that uh, these are the x values then uh, uh, data x0 data x1 data y0 data y1 data z0 and data z1 so using these registers you will be able to read the readings uh, get the readings okay now let me show you the functions that i have created for the same for developing the android application so in total we have eight functions so let me go you uh, go through and uh, uh, tell you about that so first function is i2c open adapter uh, this function takes adapter number as the input and returns the file descriptor for the i2c adapter so uh, using that descriptor you will be able to uh, further uh, do read and write operations on the uh, sensor next is i2c set slave uh, so this takes the i2c file descriptor that uh, uh, previous uh, function returned and takes the address so this address is actually the address of the um, sensor that is at s so in our case it is uh, 0x53 so this is that address and uh, so this takes the i2c adapter file descriptor and address at which device is attached as input and sets slave for file descriptor using iocTL call next is i2c set address so this is uh, uh, actually this takes file descriptor and uh, uh, unsight care address uh, this is used by some uh, functions internally for uh, random access of sensor registers so if you uh, do uh, if you want to see a particular uh, register then you can utilize this uh, function next is i2c write byte so this is used for writing a writing particular byte at particular address so this function is used to write byte provided in the uh, argument at particular address next is, next is i2c write bytes so if you want to write the multiple bytes and you do not want to do it one by one then you can use uh, this uh, this function next is uh, i2c read byte so this function can be used for uh, reading a particular byte uh, so it reads a byte from the address provided and returns the byte value next is i2c read bytes so this is used for reading a sequence of bytes uh, uh, so for that it is used to get the length number of bytes in buff uh, array from the address starting uh, so from the address 
from the address okay that is provided in the argument next is i2c close so for closing the file descriptor so these are the functions that we will be using for developing our android application in this video <coughs> actually uh, a blog post is already there on my blog uh, which describes how to develop this android application so if you want to go so you can actually go to blog dot in if you open that block then there is a page at the bottom bbb android so actually all the posts that uh, i have already made regarding this topic are uh, present here so in this post uh, i have a bbb i2c app so you can see so you will be able to see all these steps for creating the i2c app so okay so let's uh, create the app now so in previous videos i already told you the steps of how to uh, copy paste the uh, bbb android code and uh, then then paste it in your uh, in your project gni folder and uh, then build the code so i don't think uh, i need to tell you it once again so actually so this is the gni folder i have already copy pasted the things i require so let me show you some of the files so so here you can see that there are all the functions i to see open adapter set slave then set address then byte then everything is there then i have gni wrapper for uh, i to see app so using these functions only we will be able to uh, call these native functions from the java fun uh, java program so here is the code that i have already developed so uh first of all for uh, uh, let me show you the code go through the code so here you can see that uh, i have included all the native function calls and uh, i have included the prototype of, of uh, all the native function calls then i have included the library bbb android hall then next uh, i have open uh, done open adapter for uh, the device uh, i to see bus 1 then i have accessed i have set slave that is i have set the sensor device that is present at 0x53 then actually i am reading the chip id of this sensor by using i to see read byte so and next i am displaying this on screen next what i am doing is i am setting the power control register uh, the thing we did earlier so this is the function i to see write byte uh, i have done that then next i have done is uh, set the data format registers okay now i am reading the values of all the axes that is x y and z through i to see read byte and displaying the initial values I have a button for poll status on click of that button I am reading the values so for demonstrating the read bytes I uh, I also use this function so I am reading continuously all the registers from 32 to 37 that carries all the x y and z values using uh, read bytes and displaying it on screen so let's build that in this application and uh, see on screen so let's build this application so so actually it is present in i2c file ok so here uh, you can see that uh, all these uh, things is same let me show you this uh, 
so everything is just the same I've just copied uh, that for sample okay now let's uh, build it so we I'm call calling the NDK build from this current folder so it will just build so it is actually already built so let me just remove it first okay now I'll build so you can see that it is successfully building so it is all uh, it is built now let's run the application so let me show you the uh, output so here is my screen you can see that here so these are the values that are currently being shown now what I do is I am rotating the sensor a little bit so I am just I have just rotated the sensor and uh, I'll just pull the value so you can see that values are changed again I am changing the sensor okay I have changed the sensor position again I am pulling the status so it is again changed so you can see that uh, using the Android application I have already access the sensor okay thank you